Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I've got uh, an Armand Nicolette JS9. This is the new diver from Armand Nicolette to share with you guys today. And I've been pretty excited about this one. This one is a brand that I'd never seen in person before, but I'd always wanted to. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, Armand Nicolette is an independent Swiss brand that was established in 1875 in a small town in the, in the Jura, Switzerland region called Tramland. So you can see that actually printed just underneath the curved branding below the 10 o'clock, oh, sorry, the 12 o'clock position on the dial. I think that's pretty interesting. Now this watch, the JS9, I'll throw some specs here on the screen so you guys can see the dimensions. Uh, this one is very impressive to me for a number of reasons. For one, it blends, at least in my eyes, it blends some bold modern design cues with some more traditional or finessed elements that I just find uh, I just find very attractive. So looking at the case, we have long beveled with a, with a really big bevel, angular lugs and uh, dramatic crown guards for a very bold uh, kind of modern in your face look. And then you pair that with some other elements like the near conical, a ceramic bezel insert in that beautiful texturized dial that is slightly reflective, not quite white, not quite silver, and just a nice backdrop for those brushed, fasted, applied markers. We have a domed sapphire crystal with blue AR coating on the underside of the crystal. If we turn the watch over, we've got a very nice embossing on the back with a uh, just good delineation of different finishes. Notice the base texture and how that kind of ties in with the texturized dial on the opposite side. There's just some good attention to detail and uh, even the bracelet is held together by double screw pins on both sides and each link is articulating so uh, you just can get really nice flexibility and comfort. Um, take a look at this flip lock butterfly clasp with some nice perlage work. Just, uh, I don't know, there's just something about this watch that just blends those different elements together in a very nice way. Another modern one uh, that I've never seen on another watch is their signed crown. Uh, it's a nice signed crown with a rubber <laughs> fitting uh, section covering uh, the main crown. So that is meant to enhance the tactile feel when you're operating the crown and uh, you know just setting the time, hacking the movement, adjusting the date, that's pretty functional. And aesthetically, it ties in very nice with that ceramic bezel insert. So uh, just everything about it, I think, is very well thought out. And there's some really nice execution going on here. So who's this watch for? Um, the retail price is 1,700 Swiss francs. So it's not an inexpensive watch, but it, it is not a cheap watch. It's um, it's been really cool to have in hand. So I think if you're looking in that price category and you're considering Oris, uh, you're looking at Longines, you're looking at pre-owned, you know, Bond Seamasters from Omega, I think the Armand Nicolette JS9 is definitely one that you want to consider, at least um, spend a little time researching because I think it's pretty impressive. Uh, so this is how it fits on my 7.25 inch wrists. I'm actually a fan of the 24 millimeter lugs and how they taper down uh, to the bracelet. There's a nice, just a, a nice way that this feels on wrist. No hot spots. Those angular lugs arc down and I find it to just wear very well. A little bit smaller than its larger or more uh, sport dimensions would, would suggest. Now the movement in here is what they call the AN2846-9. It's based off of an ETA caliber called the 2846. This one has 36 hours of power reserve, 21 joules, and has a slightly lower beat frequency at 21,600 beats per hour. This one is running as accurate as a chronometer. So I'm getting about plus five seconds a day, which is just on that outside edge of those specifications. Now, um, my overall thoughts on the watch, Again, I think it's very sharp. This is a very photogenic watch. I like, I've really enjoyed photographing it this week, spending some time with it on wrist. Uh, yes, this is an attractive piece and I like the little details. I like the execution. Most of all, I like the originality 
You know, this is definitely original brand, a Swiss brand with a Swiss execution. And it's refreshing because, you know, not everybody, you won't see this very often on Facebook watch groups or watch forums. Uh, this is one that is a little bit more under the radar, but still retains some nice quality. So overall, I'm very impressed with everything, you know, from that case back to that beautiful dial, um, the overall dramatic look and the blending of modern and uh, more finessed elements, I think is all really well done. What would I change about the watch? There's just two things. Now, if we look at the handset, I like the shape. I like how wide each element is. I like the beveling, but this uh, matte finish just isn't quite doing it for me. It kind of blends in with that dial. So I'd love to see this one have a nice polished or rhodium plated handset. I think that would pop a little bit more, uh, you know, to see some light reflected at you. I think it would be a little bit more functional. And then the other element is also uh, kind of subjective, but I really like the dramatic um, polish and that chamfer that's found throughout the case. It's on the top as well as on the underside. And I would love for that element to be um, continued here on the tapering uh, bracelet. I think that that would also just bring another nice little detail, another nice quality about the watch that could enhance it. But other than that, you know, this one's really cool. So big shout out to Armand Nicolette for lending this in for review. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of wanting to buy it, but I just spent quite a bit of money on a Rolex GMT. So I'm not sure if it's in the budget for me right now, but it has been a very enjoyable watch. And I hope you guys have enjoyed um, looking at the video and I hope the quality is coming through through these pictures and video clips because this one is pretty cool. So definitely one to keep in mind if you're looking at this price category, which I think you know, the 1,500 to the 2,500 price category really is um, an expanding market. It's open for someone to take the lead, so to speak, and just offer some awesome products. So, you know, if you're looking for, you're looking at Oris, you're looking at Manta, you're looking at Longines, looking at Zinn, I think you should take a look at this one as well. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. Please let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.